to talk a little bit about a lot of the issues I get involved in. It seems like every week I teach uh, probably in the last 10 years, 1,000 people in asbestos safety. And one of the things, you know, we haven't seen today, so I'm going to kind of focus on that a little bit, is the training aspect. You know, OSHA has got a lot of numbers, and I just uh, go through there. I like Linda's slide that she gave me like five years ago on the how small is asbestos. But, you know, we got, uh, I got to watch it from the 70s. Oh, we're talking 5 million parts per cubic foot is the asbestos limit, or 5 MCC, PP, AED, you know, whatever. It's, it's numbers. And then OSHA gate the numbers from 15 fibers per cubic centimeter to 10 to 12 to 5 to 2 to 0.02. And you know what? When I started training the workers, we kind of focused on let's train the workers in these numbers because they'll know what it means. And I found out they have no clue what these numbers are. So I'm going to just do a little experiment. I'm going to show you how I train people and how it makes a difference. Okay, so when we talk about our standard is 200... Uh, uh, 0.2 fibers per cc, they all know what an asbestos fiber is. That, that I get. Most people can get the idea we can see fibers rip when we take a tissue, we see them floating in the air. They have no idea what OSHA does for sampling. When I sample for asbestos, you know, we went out and sampled at two liters per minute, two liter bottle. Everybody knows what that is. We're going to sample for 480 minutes or 960 liters. Okay, that's a cubic meter. A lot of people, yeah, okay, a cubic meter, I, I don't know, really know what that is. So if you can just imagine a refrigerator that you have at your house and you rip out all the guts, that is a cubic meter. That is what you're allowed to breathe in a day for asbestos. But the standard was changed in the 70s. It's 0.2 cc, or fibers per cc. Nobody knows what a cubic centimeter is. If I ask every European is, they can show me by the fingers what a cubic centimeter is. But when I go out here, I'm lucky to have one person out of 100 knows what that means. So that's an education issue. So let me just explain what it is. It used to be a sugar cube, but a lot of kids don't know what that is. You know, I just think of a big M&M. That's all it is. Just a big M&M is a cubic centimeter, and you are allowed to have a million cubic centimeters in your refrigerator. And we take that number from OSHA, 0.02 fibers per cubic centimeter, it means 200,000 fibers in your refrigerator you can breathe in a day. But what does that rate mean? That's all the rate we might breathe in this room. We're relaxed, we're calm. But if you're out there in the factory or you're out there on a construction site, you might be breathing in five refrigerators of air that day. So you know the standard isn't there. Unfortunately, in 36 years, I've seen enough people die from asbestos that you know the standard's a joke. The standard is way too low, and I agree with Art about that this is zero, because it doesn't work. We have 4,600 people that they say die at work every year, and we have thousands of people dying from asbestos. 30 years ago, I thought, well, we wouldn't have any that much. We get like five or six or 10 or 100. No, it's still over several thousand. So we know the standard isn't working. So when we go into this area, and I get issues with the landlords and everything else in the schools, and they said, oh, we did EPA clearance sampling. Um, we're going to go out there and... Uh, um, go out and measure it and it's 0 0.01 and 10,000 fibers per cubic centimeter. Well, I take a look at this room and it says, oh yeah, we're below the EPA carrot sample. Big deal. How many refrigerators are in this room? How many asbestos particles are we talking about? If I run out there and say, oh, I'm at 0 0.4 or something, I'm at half the limit of the EPA clearance, we're still talking millions of fibers in this room. And this room, you're going to be breathing it in until all the fibers are gone. So you really started making this point. This should be zero for any public occupancy. My house is zero, where I work is zero, where I go to church is zero, everything is zero. Why is it going to be allowed to have this old obsolete number of thousands of fibers floating in the air? Um, so the action item I like to see also is uh, that I'd like to see OSHA do something that doesn't cause a regulatory change. Let's get rid of 0 0.02 fibers per uh, cubic centimeter. Let's put 200,000 fibers per your refrigerator of air or cubic meter a day. OSHA could easily change that. It doesn't require any congressional approval, and that would make a difference because now you're out there talking about how many fibers do you want to breathe a day? Out of two. Oh, you're at 195. <laughs> you're good. We have only 195,000 fibers in your room. And you know what? The workers grasp that. They grasp that. And then I start talking about Mavis Nye or Heather or Stephanie, and we start talking about those issues. And... Um, you know, getting has, you know, asbestos from washing the clothes, hugging your dad. And I sit there and says, really? You know, you think the standard is safe when it's all they did and they've gotten it? 
You're not going to get asbestos from anything else. You're not going to get it from Big Macs. You're not going to get it from grinding wood. You're going to get it from asbestos. And that's the issue on there. So I'd like to sit there and, and watch the CDC track the deaths. I think 2013 they stopped tracking the asbestos deaths. Why? Why? The number one risk to a worker that dies is asbestos. We got 800 people die about falls. We got a OSHA fall pretension. But why don't we have something with asbestos? When I was with OSHA, I had activated every single asbestos complaint because I had that discretion when I ran an OSHA office, and you could do that. But you were talking a lot of workers, and the workers that they put in these places are horrible. I got a lot of slides on there about uh, some of the things here. We're looking at these numbers. Oh yeah, here's an EPA sample here. Uh, we got our fiber counts, uh, three per hundred. Our results are 0004 fibers out here. And you know, you're at 4,000 fibers in your cubic centimeter, but this is your living room. This is your kitchen. And you know what, you're at a rental place, and guess what, you're ven you don't have ventilation. You and your kids are going to be breathing in 4,000 fibers per refrigerator air, and you've got hundreds of refrigerators of asbestos to breathe in until maybe your kids get it or you get it. You know, it's just a matter of craziness. So I want to see EPA get rid of that stupid 0.1 because people don't think it's a big deal. When they start saying, oh, you have 10,000 fibers per cubic centimeter or a cubic meter, now they start saying, well, why isn't it uh, like, like two? Why isn't it like one? Because I don't want to breathe in 10,000 or 9,999 in one refrigerator because I've got hundreds of refrigerators in my living space of air. There's a lot of problems. I am working on a case with uh, one of the newspapers in uh, Michigan about, you know, OSHA's got to be a little bit tougher. Michigan OSHA is good, but they can be greater. They're given too much um, low penalties for asbestos. I was always give the maximum penalty. I don't believe that nobody doesn't have an idea what asbestos is. And, and we push it hard. I mean, the people I used to work with in OSHA, they're very aggressive, and so was some of the EPA people. Franklin Alberry, 2013, does a rip run, hires four people, rip it out, doesn't do the stuff, but he gets caught. And people always think it's a worker that turns him in, not on these rip run jobs. They go looking for the homeless, they go looking at the shelters, they want the person who doesn't have any clue what even asbestos is. And they go out there and give him, maybe they'll be nice, give him a dust mask. Um, but he got uh, uh, five months in prison in Illinois. The largest fine, two of the largest fines in the last five years in Illinois have been asbestos ones. Because I want to believe the Illinois OSHA people know it real well. They know the effects. They've seen that human aspect out there. So they are going to go out there and look at it a million eight for asbestos. Aurora. When I talk about cases, this printing company up in Aurora hired three people at the homeless shelter, said I'll pay you 60 bucks to take out the asbestos. Here's a mask. There it is. When I went there to do this stuff, it's like Tony says, every job. They don't even know. He didn't even know the people's names. I just gave him 60 bucks. They ripped it up, threw it in the dumpster, and not got caught. So we get two willfuls in that case. Should have been more back then. You know, like I said, you know, you learn. This is back in the early uh, days. This one here is the church tile basement. They know it's something, but one of the church members said, you know, I think that's, you know, they kept on talking about it before 1980. You know, it's a problem. Another one, this one was a school, and you know, like Tom's talking about it here, I'm, he's right. These schools are, schools are clueless on the asbestos rules. There's nobody that knows them anymore. I haven't seen it. And they're gonna go out there and pull out asbestos ceiling tiles, everything else. The EPA uh, consultant that's going out there, oh yeah, they're, well, they're below the clearance level. Yeah, but you can't rip it up and throw it in the dumpster. You've got asbestos tracked all through the school. And now you're telling them, you've got to get a person that's licensed to clean it. I'm calling the EPA. The EPA shuts it down until they get a licensed asbestos contractor for $200,000 because this contractor ripped it up and got it all over the school. Because remember, they went zero. And, uh, and, and this is one of the few cases the uh, consultant was under such stress after screwing up so bad that he actually committed suicide, you know, and it's pretty amazing. Um, another case up in uh, Cicero, Illinois, a few years ago that I got involved in, um, they're going to take out the asbestos, get three uh, guys from uh, Mexico and one guy from Eastern Europe, here's your mask, go rip this up, throw it in the dumpster. But you know what? We worked hard with the cleaning companies and the garbage companies, waste management, Brown and Ferris, and all these other ones. They look at that white thing in the dumpster, they say, well, I think that's asbestos. I'll call EPA, EPA comes in, shuts it down, they call us, and next thing you know, we got a million dollar penalty. Because they knew what it was. I dug, we dug, the, the compliance officer there dug and we found the consultant's report. And we, we you know, they were saying, oh, I didn't see it. I didn't know it, it was asbestos. No, I got a report. 
Nobody doesn't know what asbestos is, especially if you're over 40. And again, I'm going to give you some other things that are going to be out there for what's cited a lot, um, you know, what does OSHA look for. They have to have training for anybody that's going to do the work. Everything has to be in a regulated area. It's not that hard to put up a regulated area and a HEPAVAC. So I work with a lot of people who have to come into this, what do they want to know, and I show them. It's not easy. It's not, not that hard. Um, you've got to sample the, the exposure assessment. You got lead, you got asbestos, you got other ones, eventually silica is going to be the same way. You got to know what it is. You can't just say, I think it is, I don't think it is. Because, you know, a lot of employers are waiting to have somebody get caught, and that's when they're going to get in a world of hurt. And then again, we're going to wear the protective overalls. You know, I wore Tyvek. I don't think this cheap China stuff that was Tony was showing is, is out there, but man, I've watched the guys do it. They buy the cheapest thing to give the workers. And the last thing is you've got to put it in a, a proper disposal area. I mean, there's a lot of rules, but I mean, I think the top five are the, are, if you can follow those, you're probably going to do the rest of them right. And so, like I said, we'll talk about questions later, later on. Thank you very much. All right.